What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake, and in today's video, AMD has officially announced a release date for the RX 7800 XT and the RX 7700 XT. And we're going to do some dubious speculation as to whether or not these cards are going to be decent at mining. But before we get into the content, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so by the end of the video. So on AMD's official website, they have an announcement date listed here at September 6th of 2023, which at the time of recording is roughly about a week and a half away. And if we take a look at how the 7000 series GPUs is performing so far on hashrate.no, we're looking at 13 cents per kilowatt hour, which is currently, I believe, the national average for most of the viewers watching. And you have to scroll down a very, very far ways before you get to the first 7000 series GPU on here, which is going to be the 7600 coming in at negative 7 cents a day in profit. And that is much, much worse than the 6000 series GPUs, which are coming in at 8 cents a day in profit for the 6800 XT, 7 cents a day for the 6900 XT, and 5 cents a day for the 6800. Now, what if you have a much lower power rate? Let's say, for example, 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Well, the most profitable one is going to be a 6900 XT coming in at 16 cents, followed by a 6800 XT also at 16 cents. But you still have to scroll down a pretty good ways before you find a 7000 series GPU. The first one is going to be the 7900 XTX coming in at a profit of 4 cents per day. Now, what if you're at, let's say, for instance, eight cents per kilowatt hour? At eight cents per kilowatt hour, the 6900 XT is still the most profitable, but the 7900 XTX moves up the list quite a ways, coming in at 18 cents a day in profit. So you can see, just based off of this, that the 7000 series is not as efficient as the 6000 series, which has been the Achilles heel so far for the 7000 series GPUs. However, if we take a look at the TDP specifically for the 7800 XT and the 7700 XT, we're going to notice that there is a little bit of a difference here compared to how the 7900 XTX and the 7900 XT have compared to the 6900 XT and the 6800 XT. So for example, looking at the 7800 XT, our TDP is coming in at 263 as compared to a 6800 XT with a TDP of 300 watts. Now, if we take a look, for example, at the 7900 XTX compared to a 6900 XTX, the 7900 XTX TDP was 355 watts as compared to 300 watts. So you can see why the 7900 XTX is, has not been efficient as the 6900 XT. Now, as far as the 7700 XT compared to the 6700 XT, the 7700 XT is coming in at 245 watts on the TDP as compared to 230 watts on the 6700 XT. So we did jump up a little bit on the 7700 XT, but on the 7800 XT, we did drop down just a little bit. Now, if we take all of the specs, such as the bus size, the CUDA core, the memory bandwidth, the base clock, and the boost clock, and we throw that into our TPA calculator, which some of you may be new to the channel and you're not familiar with this, but this stands for Total Performance Average. And it's something that I created back around the time of the ETH merge to figure out how all of these GPUs would compare to one another on other algorithms. So this kind of just takes an average of all algorithms together. And as you can see, a 3090 Ti gets a score of 144.92. A 6950 XT gets a score of 89.97. And now that we have specs for the 4000 series GPUs, as well as the 7000 series GPUs from AMD, we've got some total performance average numbers here to go over as well. So let's take a look at the 7800 XT first. We've got a memory bus of 256, 3840 shading cores, 620 on the bandwidth, 2124 on the base clock, 2430 on the boost clock, giving us a score of 80.55. 
Well, how does that compare to the previous 6000 series from AMD? Well, at 80.5, the closest thing we're going to find is a 6800 XT coming in at 79.88. So my assumption here is that the 7800 XT is going to be almost identical to the 6800 XT as far as performance across all algorithms. There will be some that it is better on and there will be some that it is worse on perhaps, but it looks like they're going to be pretty close. And as far as the 6700 XT compared to the 7700 XT, we've got a score of 75.23 on the 7700 XT as compared to a score of 67.475 on the 6700 XT. So what this tells me is the performance gain between the 6700 and the 7700 is going to be a little bit more significant on the 7700 XT than it is compared to the 7800 XT compared to a 6800 XT. And I think basically what this boils down to is to tell you not to expect anything drastic as far as efficiency is concerned and mining performance on the 7800 XT and the 7700 XT. Perhaps we will be pleasantly surprised, but me personally, I won't be running out to buy a 7800 XT or the 7700 XT. I'm going to wait to see what hash rates look like and we will take it from there. Now if you guys want a little bit more of an in-depth look at the TPA calculator, you can take a look at this video here that I posted about six months ago that kind of explains in detail how the spreadsheet works and why I created it. But that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoy the content. Do me a favor before you go, hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so and I will see you on the next one.